Thank you. I call a member for Bowman. Deputy Speaker, I use this opportunity of address and reply to highlight some important issues that my area of Redlands has fought for over the last decade, in particular uh, the acknowledgement that our unique geography and ecology shapes the issues that have uh, focused my population's attention. Over the last three elections, of course, being on the Queensland coast, uh, having uh, Moreton Bay Islands off the coast and, of course, having all the challenges of an outer metropolitan area, you can imagine that the concerns will be primarily around balancing the need for infrastructure and opportunity with preserving our fabulous bayside environment, which is globally unique. Of course, Moreton Bay is um, a standout area of Ramsar significance, with populations of sea turtles, dugongs, migratory birds, not to mention the fishing opportunities. And so over the last three elections, what's been top of the agenda for locals there, wanting better health and education services, that's not unfamiliar, wanting better roads and public transport, that's not unfamiliar, but we've had some real unique concerns around those who live on our islands, the 7,000 Australians who live on Moreton Bay's islands, and their transport needs to get on and off to work, and of course the right that every South East Queenslander, if not Australian, cherishes, the right to be able to wet a line and go fishing without undue uh, government interference. That's characterised the last three elections. We've seen attempts by the previous state Labor government to zone large areas of Moreton Bay on very, very flimsy evidence. and It's a mess that's only now being unpicked by the current LNP government. If there's anyone in this community who cares about the sustainability of fishing areas, it's fishermen, I can assure you. Fishermen know what's going on. They see what others are doing. There's a certain uh, support and peer group pressure even around the boat ramps right up and down the Queensland coast for one. And fishermen had those powers taken away in what were expansive and arbitrary green zones. To highlight just one story, Deputy Speaker, there was a green zone placed down in the southern Moreton Bay area that nobody knew why it was there until we looked at the Google Maps where obviously the bureaucrats had seen where the fishing boats were and they were drawing little lines around wherever they saw a fishing boat just in case it was somewhere that might be a good green zone. From this flimsy level of evidence, we've now seen investment both from the Howard government and then I think future commitments at state level to, get, to garner better evidence about what is sustainable in the biomass in a very, very delicate ecology like Moreton Bay. Of course, you can't live in an area without opportunity and without jobs. You don't want to live in a community where everyone has to leave for work. And like many stories that will be familiar in this chamber, nearly half of my population has a member of the family jumping in a vehicle or into public transport and leaving the area purely for employment. And this tension, Deputy Speaker, about having opportunities in your local area through employment and through allowing population growth and for giving opportunity, having education there so that people don't have to leave for substantial periods of their career will be something that I think everyone who serves an outer metropolitan uh, seat will have to fight for. We want to know that we've got the best health services in an era when services are centralising to larger tertiary uh, facilities. Increasingly, we're seeing that uh, centripetal pressure to bring services at the highest level into just one or two hospitals in cities, and that simply undercuts the political power of local superintendents to keep their staff and to keep their hospitals well supplied and able to deliver uh, top-class, world-class care that we know can be done but so often isn't. And then, lastly of all, we simply have the issue of people movement, and we had the impact of the carbon tax and the removal of the diesel rebate, meaning that a full 10 per cent more would be paid by people travelling on and off islands as a result of the carbon tax. It was not adequately ventilated, but a cause of great concern because thousands of my uh, people in my electorate live on islands for a variety of reasons, but still want to maintain a connection to the real economy. They want to be able to get off those islands when they need to find a job, and they want to know that emergency services can get out onto the islands when they're needed as well. Now, every one of my six populated islands have a unique uh, characteristic, and of course North Stradroke is the most obvious one that comes to mind, but I want to mention also Karagara, Lamb, Maclay and Russell, Coochie, Mudlow Islands, each with their own unique character. But history has dealt them a cruel hand, Deputy Speaker, because in the 70s when these islands were subdivided, it's been joked that we simply dropped the fly screen on these islands and sold off the blocks, with no regard to what was above or below uh, the high tide and the high water mark. So now what we have, of course, are large populations, uh, relatively uh, low rents, very difficult to sell property, and in many cases the people who most need the services are least able to get them. And that will be a long-term challenge for those representing these parts of Moreton Bay. 
Look, the infrastructure deficit, the fact that none of these islands, for instance, are sewered, uh, none of them have um, adequate public transports on the islands themselves, which are eight to ten kilometres long, uh, creates enormous pressures on these communities to be able to simply get to a boat ramp, to be able to go and see a doctor or to get other services that you can't get on the island. And of course, lastly, what we have is the, is the issue of finding a future tertiary facility for this part of, of South East Queensland. And there's no doubt that we want our universities to be top class facilities, but we also know increasingly that young families don't want to see their kids having to drive to the other side of Brisbane just to get basic qualifications in how to service an automobile or how to get a basic trade. And if we can possibly keep some sort of critical mass in communities like mine where young people can finish their grade 10 or their senior qualification without being asked to take three buses and a one and a half hour trip, then surely there must be a public good in that. Of course, fighting for these priorities is not limited to one side of politics. I mean, both sides of this chamber are going to share these objectives, though they'll probably come at them in a different way. And Bowman, having been one of those changing hands seats, has seen some enormous election campaigns over the last uh, uh, three federal elections. And in that time in particular, uh, we've seen huge amounts of volunteers coming out to fight for whatever they believe in. So today I want to acknowledge people who have supported any of the political parties in, in my area because they're fighting for what uh, they think is right for their community. But specifically, what I want to mention is that on our side of politics, we rely utterly, no, completely on volunteers. There's no bust-in crowds. There's no one on any union salaries. These are people who give their own time for free because they want a better country. And to that end, what can you do? All you can do is look after your volunteers as well as you can. And I'd like to mention a few of them today and then talk about some of the unique contributions during those campaigns. Uh, Bowman was arguably Australia's first electorate that used expansive use of highways and byways to run um, political campaigning, even outside of the election cycle. So this is, you know, after an election, before an election, it doesn't matter, people on the sides of the roads holding signs. This was something that was usually only done by an MP after they'd won a seat and they held a little thank you sign for one morning and then went and had brunch somewhere. But in Bowman, what happened three elections ago is that uh, key uh, geographic areas in the electorate became areas where there were rallies, people with signs, uh, handmade messages for both sides of the political fence. But once one side started doing it, the other was compelled to reciprocate. And this drew people out to be part of that massive commuter movement into Brisbane every day to have your political say at the same time. And that was a, a major victory, I think, in getting people mobilised. People like uh, Peter Reid, Judy Ann Zacker, um, Dennis Bowman, Barry and Shay Murphy, Troy Brown, Fred and Gloria Olson, Mike and Pam Samet, Judy Hallisey, Judy Ann Zacker, Peter Reid and uh, Matty Arthurs were all people who got out and, and, and got involved in that kind of activity. On the other side, you've got, the, you've got the, 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 the grunt and the brawn, and on the other side, you've got the technology. And increasingly, we've had to keep up with increasing use of social media and uh, various forms of, of telco as well to reach out to people who normally don't read, read flyers. One of the ways this has been done, we will all remember, were the 2004 robocalls, where messages were pushed through to thousands of homes around my electorate as one of two or three that were piloted in that election. It caused enormous surprise at the time has now become routine and commonplace and, if anything, is now being superseded by other technologies, all of which have been pioneered in my seat. Moving from robocalls were spider calls where, within hours, a voice can be recorded for about uh, 30 seconds and then transmitted to the community to nominated phone numbers the following day. And this made campaigns way more responsive than they could have dreamed of before, when predominantly we were just printing off flyers and hoping people plucked them out of their letterboxes and read them. We know that isn't the case, and we know that that's not a great way to reach locals. Uh, more recently, has, uh, the SMS technology has allowed ninja calls now to actually divert from a person's handset and go straight to the voicemail. This allows people to listen to a pre-recorded message without being interrupted at the time of that phone call coming in. This new technology is also likely to see more widespread use. And then pioneered in Bowman also was the use of a small device that allows us to aggregate uh, SMS uh, mobile phone numbers and be able to target information according to age, geography and the issue that people care about. So for the first time we can see genuinely tailored efforts to reach out to young people with a particular concern. Uh, we can reach out to uh, mothers of a particular age. 
or a particular geography, and we can reach older people, for instance, who care about a different issue entirely without bothering the rest of them. And a good example of this has been the fishing issue, where large amounts of information are now transmitted using social and SMS uh, communication. Obviously, Facebook is occupying more and more time. Everyone in here, I see Facebook being used more widely, people sitting on it during question time. I'm glad it's still within the standing orders to have a peek at what your, your constituents are saying uh, while you're in this chamber. But we now do have a, a budget set aside to specifically reach out to our constituents. Bowman's the only seat uh, in this place that uh, absolutely and rigorously uh, focuses its social media uh, timeline onto locals, and you cannot be on that page unless we verify you as coming from the community. And I think that really generates a local conversation, doesn't it? When you feel you can talk, when it's your neighbour or the people down the street or the neighbouring suburb who are going to be engaging you, it's far different to having a fan page that pulls in the entire nation, where you've got, uh, to use inverted commas, trolls coming from all over the place, who will often flame your point of view uh, for no good reason other than that's what they almost do as a full-time profession. So keeping it local, I think, has made a, a massive difference. Uh, finally, what we've tried to do is, is utilise billboard technology more. And again, that's commonplace now, but wasn't so much uh, uh, five or ten years ago. And for the first time this year, we're actually using solar-powered illumination of billboards where billboards were not illuminated. Uh, for those who worked uh, outside and, and campaigned, I want to recognise them as well. Uh, Paul Field, who's been a long-term campaigner and once an, a, a councillor for the Redland area. Lena Brooks, Sean Edwards. Mark, uh, Mark Neville, Paul Brannigan and Susie Foster, um, Gordon Soames, Peter Johnson, Rod MacDonald and the tireless Ed Barclay who'd pull up in his uh, company uh, ute on his way to work and, and spend half an hour on the side of the road on those long four hour sessions where you're effectively just standing on a busy uh, stinking hot corner uh, waving to constituents and hoping that one or two of them will pull over and have a chat to you about what they care most about. Uh, Jess Holsworth, I mentioned Maddie Arthurs. The other great push was moving into licensed facilities at 10 o'clock at night, taking a few people, doing some non-profit work and having a chance to meet people under the age of 21 who almost never get to meet someone who works, uh, you know, who, who's a politician. So reaching out to those people is absolutely critical if you're going to improve your, your net preference above zero uh, with an age that are typically quite sceptical, if not hostile, towards politicians. Uh, to Luke and Jack Hughes, Ian Stevens, Adrian Verco, John Colvin, Alan Mickelson, Kirsty Hagen, Ed O'Driscoll, uh, Thomas Neville, Matt Herbert, and Chris and Cam Leaf. It was Cameron who pioneered the, the SMS uh, uh, Arduino device, as it's called, imported from the US, that allows high speed SMS communication to large numbers of people and provides logs of their responses. Um, Peter Lapp, Dan Jarvis, James Jimenez, Bill Dingley, and of course Louise Peters. To them I say, it doesn't really matter which party you support, but in this great and thriving democracy, it is great that Australians can still come out in a seat that matters, fight for what they believe in, and be part of a peaceful democratic process, which Australia is proud of.